So thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, I wish I didn't have to share with you what I'm about to share with you, but um, it's the way it is. Uh, if you have uh, follow-up questions, uh, I'm going to be here, and also I have three of my colleagues in the back uh, standing beside those maps, and they're just waiting to talk to you. So be Frank on the edge, Janet in the middle, and uh, Jeff on the other side, left-hand side. Well, I could only show you one slide. This slide actually has all the information that I'm going to summarize uh, through about 20 more slides tonight. So I'll just go through this quickly. Uh, we are looking uh, down slope toward the east from above the uh, lava flow as it looked uh, this afternoon. And uh, the marketplace, the edge of the Pahoa marketplace is only about six tenths of a mile uh, from the leading edge of the lava flow. And in the past two days, the flow has indeed slowed down, as the mayor said, from 300, over 300 yards a day to about 165 yards a day. And if you do the math, how many of you done the math already? <laughs> how many days? Six. Six days. That's if it keeps going uh, at the same rate. And we might expect the rate to change, either a little faster, a little slower. It's not clear. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out that I'm sure you've already seen in some of the maps that we posted online is that the flow front is not just uh, one point or one lobe. If you look closely, you'll see a little uh, finger headed off this direction and also another uh, perhaps wider, more active part heading over this way. The path of steepest descent actually follows uh, this one and runs down slope and heads right to the marketplace. Uh, this particular one here uh, will turn to the uh, south and join that steepest descent path. Uh, the maps that we have been showing you for the past four months uh, have a certain representation of those steepest descent lines. Uh, we can show a more detailed map with more descent lines, but it's kind of, it gets really confusing. And so there is another steepest descent line that runs over this side, but it, it peels over here to the south and joins this main one that we've shown on our regular map. So, that flow should very likely move over into the steepest descent and both of those will join together. This is a view from uh, above uh, the marketplace here, uh, looking back toward the leading edge of the flows. The, here's the one path off to the south, here's the other one. These will join and then continue down to the middle of the marketplace. As you're looking up slope, you'll notice that there are quite a few breakouts up here. I'll show you uh, a few slides of what that looks like. Uh, we were able to fly this afternoon, so the slides I'm going to show you will be uh, from just a few hours ago. So I said that the uh, tip of the lava flow is six tenths of a mile to right here, but it's eight tenths of a mile out to uh, Highway 130 here. Okay, there are two main points that I'm uh, trying to make today. Uh, based on today's measurements, there is uh, no change in the lava discharge from Pu'uo'o. So the uh, amount of lava coming out of the tube or into the tube is still about 60% of the peak flow uh, that was occurring uh, in uh, July and August of this year. So it's still, still at this relatively modest level. Uh, there are several breakouts that are continuing up slope, but they're not as active today as they were earlier this week and last week. And there's no real significant change in the summit tilt of Kilauea up by Hale Mau Mau. So taking all of those things together, there's no suggestion, there's no hint in that data that suggests that the lava advance is expected to slow down uh, significantly in the next few days. Uh, also, the uh, flow is still moving along the steepest descent path uh, toward the Pahoa marketplace. And once it reaches, if it reaches the marketplace, the exact path through the market is uncertain. 
even though the steepest descent path goes right through it, all that cultural development uh, since those maps were prepared means that it's not very clear where the lava is going to go once it reaches the marketplace. But the overall topography is that the steepest uh, descent path does continue across the highway and uh, will cross Kahakai Boulevard in two locations before it continues its way down toward the ocean. And I'll show you a map of that. So even though the immediate concern is the Bahoa Marketplace, uh, if we look a little bit further beyond uh, and where the path of those steepest descent lines go, uh, they, that one particular descent line does cross Kahakai Boulevard in two locations. Okay, well let's start up at Pu'uo'o. This is what the uh, cone looked like today. Here's the main crater. Uh, the blue smoke that you see here uh, is rising from skylights above the lava tube. And the main vent uh, is located right here. So this is where the lava is welling up from below the crater of Pu'uo'o. It's entering into the vent and it's pouring directly into the lava tube that ends then uh, pouring down the slope. We were able to make a measurement across the lava tube. The cross-sectional area of the lava stream has not changed in the past week. It's essentially identical to last week and even the week before. So there has been no change in the amount of lava pouring into the lava as far as we can tell. And uh, so that means that the lava discharge is about 60% of what it was in August during the peak amount of flow. And uh, that also means that right now there's about 420 gallons a second of lava pouring into the tube. Okay, so here's an overall map of uh, the eastern part of the island. Here's Pu'uo down in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, here's Pahoa right here. And I've uh, circled the area of breakouts. There are three main areas of breakouts occurring from the lava tube. Uh, this one started on December 5th. Uh, this one just showed up uh, in the past week. And this has been a persistent area of breakouts ever since the uh, lava flow here uh, uh, moved past this area. Uh, this particular breakout is uh, not very active today. Uh, this one started on December 5th, following a very sharp summit deflation uh, trend. And like I said, it's not very active today. So I'll show you a few slides of each of these. So this is what this uh, area of breakouts near Pu'uo looked like two days ago, uh, looking through a thermal infrared camera. And Pu'uo is off, off back in the distance here, and you can see a, a number of lava streams out on the surface, and these are all small flows that are breaking out from the lava tube. But like I said, the uh, observations today suggest that that breakout has really slowed down. So not as much lava is breaking out of the tube and going into that particular breakout. If we go a little further down slope, there is another breakout that's been active uh, in this location. Uh, this is right along the uh, crack system. Here's Pu'uo off in the distance. Uh, so we're some six and a half or seven miles uh, from Pu'uo at this point. So lava broke out onto the surface and is flowing toward the north uh, through, the, through the forest. And again, this one didn't seem to be as active today as well. So it's a very sluggish uh, breakout from the crack system. So if we go a little bit further down slope, here the crack system is way up here. You see a little bit of smoke. Here's Pu'uo'o. Here is the uh, first flow that came down through Pahoa in uh, September and October. It's inactive now. And this has been the area of persistent breakouts for the past uh, couple of weeks. And here is a, the lava flow that's moving now toward the marketplace. So I'm going to show you a little close-up uh, view of what the, one of these little breakouts looks like uh, back there. You can see a very chaotic surface uh, on the active lava flow and a small little breakout here uh, moving through the trees. The surface is very chaotic, is very typical of a pohoihoi lava surface where inflation occurs in different parts of the flow. 
So a little bit further down uh, from that location, uh, this is what the surface of the flow looks like in this location where it's very, very narrow, uh, less than 50 yards wide. So there is lava moving through this uh, surface, although there, you couldn't tell it from just looking at the, uh, the surface. You don't see any steam or any fume. There's no skylight there. Uh, but uh, if you uh, look closely, say, for, uh, for example, along this edge, you'll see a little sort of offset, a little cliff. And uh, what's that? A what? Inflation. So it's evidence of inflation. So the lava flow came down through. Uh, as more lava comes in behind it through the conduit system, more of a lenticular shaped conduit, uh, it forces the roof up, it inflates, and it will break the sides of the uh, lava flow. And you can see all kinds of little evidence of uh, inflation features in here. So lava is moving through this relatively narrow part uh, down to the flow tip. Uh, here. This is the section with the very narrow uh, flow uh, right here. So um, if this flow keeps going, keeps traveling down the steepest descent path, that pathway looks something like this. And we're going to take a look at a series of maps uh, that will show this uh, more accurately. I just kind of penciled that in. But basically, both of these little lobes will merge, uh, continue flowing down slope, hit the backside of the marketplace. It's not clear what's going to happen through here, uh, where it might exit across the highway. But the basic topography is that uh, the uh, lava will then move down slope uh, in that area. Uh, this line is very narrow. It's probably on that view only uh, 50 yards or so wide, but lava flows can move uh, and uh, widen over time to uh, 100, 200, 300, 400 yards wide. So that's kind of the big unknown here over time. How wide will the flow be and how wide uh, of an area can be affected by uh, this flow? Okay, so what I wanted to do is to show you a series of maps that uh, illustrates the downslope movement of this new lava flow over time. Uh, but first I wanted to review uh, where this lava flow is originating. Where is the source of the breakout uh, from the lava tube? So this is just an orientation map here. Uh, here's Pahoa, Highway 130, this line right here. Uh, the pink is the initial lava flow that moved down a slope from the crack system and moved into Pahoa. Uh, and this is uh, a map as of uh, November 24th. The tip of the lava flow here stopped moving, stopped advancing on October 30th. And the red that you see here is new lava on the surface. Um, that began uh, erupting from the uh, lava tube on about November 18th. And so this is the uh, location of where the lava broke out of that tube after the uh, initial flow stalled. And that initial flow really became inactive uh, after about November 15th, November 14th and 15th, when a very big breakout occurred right at the base of Pu'uo'o. And that breakout right at the base of Pu'uo'o basically robbed all of the lava from the tube. And that breakout then flowed for a, several hours and actually continued for several days to a week or two. Uh, but lava made its way back into the tube uh, within about a few hours to 12 hours. And when it did so, it started to flow down the tube for miles and then led to a couple of breakouts here and there. The farthest breakout occurred uh, at this location. And just to illustrate this, uh, on November 19th, uh, this is what the crack system looked like upslope, uh, just right by the abandoned geothermal well site. And there's the uh, crest of the lava tube. And lava began spilling out in that location on both sides of uh, the lava tube. 
Uh, the lava continued moving down slope. It widened this area, flowed off to the north a little bit. And then if we look at the area covered uh, on November 24th, so five days later, uh, here's the uh, crack system and the location of where that lava initially broke out. Within five days, the lava had continued to move down the crack system and then it spilled down to the north along uh, the west side of the first lava flow. And then this particular series of flows just kept moving down slope off to the right. So now what I'll do is show you a series of maps uh, in sequence. So this is uh, the one I showed you before, uh, up the lava flow as of November 24th. Okay, this is as of December 1st. Notice the red, that's the new part of the lava flow, and notice that it's following this path of steepest descent. So December 9th. December 16th, uh, here are the breakouts occurring back here and also this little breakout up out of the crack system. And then the advance uh, in the past two days, continued breakouts here and the widening of the flow here. And here are these two little arms that I had uh, referred to earlier. Okay, so let's uh, back up a little bit and take a look at uh, where some of these paths of steepest descent uh, run uh, from that particular flow, from the active flow now. So I'll show you a, a more detailed uh, map of this area in the box. And so here's Pahoa. Here is the tip of the lava flow as of December 16th. And uh, notice that this blue line is the path of steepest descent it crosses the highway, comes across Kahakai Boulevard here, touches it there, and then cuts across right at this uh, inner uh, school, where the school is right there. So just in general, uh, the distance from Highway 130 to the school along this path of steepest descent is about uh, 2.6 miles. From the school to Railroad Avenue is another one and a half miles. And then from railroad to the ocean is 2.7 miles. So as we try to anticipate the path of the lava flow, so far these paths of steepest descent have been really good uh, uh, predictors for where the lava flow is uh, very likely to flow. So you can always refer to our maps to see where those, uh, where those flows uh, go. Okay, so as of today, uh, the leading edge of the flow uh, is about eight-tenths of a mile from Highway 130 and Pahoa Village Road along the steepest descent path, and six-tenths of a mile from uh, the market. So if this uh, new lobe steadily advances, uh, as it did between uh, November 24th and earlier this week, at this rate, 310 yards a day, uh, that's uh, about a four to five-day uh, travel time to the highway. Uh, if you look at the slower rate, which is what it has been doing the last two days, at 165 yards a day, we're looking at eight to nine days to the Highway 130. It's only six days or so to the edge of the marketplace at that slower rate. Okay, so just to, in conclusion, uh, there's been no change in the lava discharge from Pu'u'o, meaning there has not been a decrease in lava discharge from Pu'u'o. That's the key thing we're looking for. Uh, the breakouts are continuing upslope. Those are breakouts, rob flow from the tube, but they don't seem to be as active today as they were earlier this week. So less lava seems to be escaping the tube today compared to earlier. And there's no hint, uh, there's no suggestion, there, there's no trend, excuse me, there's no deflationary trend, a sharp deflationary trend at the summit to suggest that less lava is gonna eventually make it down into the tube. We haven't seen that yet. Uh, we're still in an overall inflationary trend at the summit. And uh, as I said before, the flow is moving along the path toward uh, Pahoa Market. So thank you for your patience tonight. And uh, we're all available around the margin of the room for answering your questions. I'll be up here and then we have three maps in the back. Thank you very much.